Your lungs are part of a complex system, expanding and relaxing thousands of times each day to bring in oxygen and send out carbon dioxide. The lungs are a pair of spongy, air-filled organs located on either side of the chest. The trachea conducts inhaled air into the lungs through its tubular branches, called bronchi. The bronchi then divide into smaller and smaller branches, finally becoming microscopic. The bronchioles eventually end in clusters of microscopic air sacs called alveoli. In the alveoli, oxygen from the air is absorbed into the blood. Carbon dioxide, a waste product of metabolism, travels from the blood to the alveoli, where it can be exhaled. Between the alveoli is a thin layer of cells called the interstitium, which contains blood vessels and cells that help support the alveoli. Together, the lungs contain approximately 2,400 kilometers of airways and 300 to 500 million alveoli. Lung diseases are some of the most common medical conditions in the world. Tens of millions of people have lung disease in the U.S. alone. Smoking, infections, and genes cause most lung diseases. There are many different lung diseases, some of which are caused by bacterial, viral, or fungal infections. Other lung diseases are associated with environmental factors, including asthma, mesothelioma, and lung cancer. Chronic lower respiratory diseases is a set of conditions that includes chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, emphysema, and chronic bronchitis. Together, chronic lower respiratory diseases are a leading cause of death in the United States. Bronchial asthma, or asthma for short, is a long-term disease of the lungs. It causes your airways to get inflamed and narrow, and it makes it hard to breathe. Severe asthma can cause trouble talking or being active. Asthma is a serious disease that affects about 25 million Americans and causes nearly 1.6 million emergency room visits every year. Asthma is marked by inflammation of the bronchial tubes, with extra sticky secretions inside the tubes. People with asthma have symptoms when the airways tighten, inflame, or fill with mucus. There are three major signs of asthma. Airway blockage. When you breathe as usual, the bands of muscle around your airways are relaxed and air moves freely. But when you have asthma, the muscles tighten. It's harder for air to pass through. Inflammation. Asthma causes red, swollen bronchial tubes in your lungs. This inflammation can damage your lungs. Treating this is key to managing asthma in the long run. Airway irritability. People with asthma have sensitive airways that tend to overreact and narrow when they come into contact with even slight triggers. An asthma attack is the episode in which bands of muscle around the airways are triggered to tighten. This tightening is called bronchospasm. During the attack, the lining of the airways becomes swollen or inflamed, and the cells lining the all of these things cause symptoms such as trouble breathing, wheezing, coughing, shortness of breath, and trouble with normal daily activities. Without immediate treatment, such as with your asthma inhaler or bronchodilator, it will become harder to breathe. If you use a peak flow meter at this time, the reading will probably be less than 50% of your usual or normal peak flow reading. Many asthma action plans suggest interventions Status asthmaticus. It is a medical emergency that needs treatment right away. These long-lasting asthma attacks don't go away when you use bronchodilators. Exercise-induced bronchoconstriction. You might hear this called exercise-induced asthma. It happens during physical activity, when you breathe in air that's drier than what's in your body, and your airways narrow. It can affect people who don't have asthma too. You'll notice symptoms within a few minutes after you start to exercise, and they might last 10 to 15 minutes after you stop. Allergic asthma. Things that trigger allergies, like dust, pollen and pet dander, can also cause asthma attacks. Non-allergic asthma. This type flares in extreme weather. It could be the heat of summer or the cold of winter. It could also show up when you're stressed or have a cold. Occupational asthma. It usually affects people who work around chemical fumes, dust, or other irritating things in the air. Eosinophilic asthma. This severe form is marked by high levels of white blood cells called eosinophils. It usually affects adults between 35 and 50 years old. 
Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease is a long-term lung condition that makes it hard for you to breathe. It is an umbrella term used when you have one or more of the following conditions. Emphysema. This results from damage to your lungs' air sacs that destroys the walls inside them and causes them to merge into one giant air sac. It can't absorb oxygen as well, so you get less oxygen in your blood. Damaged alveoli can make your lungs stretch out and lose their springiness. Air gets trapped in your lungs and you can't breathe it out, so you feel short of breath. Chronic bronchitis. If you have coughing, shortness of breath, and mucus that lingers at least three months for two years in a row, you have chronic bronchitis. Hair-like fibers called cilia line your bronchial tubes and help move mucus out. When you have chronic bronchitis, you lose your cilia. This makes it harder to get rid of mucus, which makes you cough more, which creates more mucus. Refractory asthma. This type may also be called non-reversible as it doesn't respond to normal asthma medications. Long-term exposure to things that irritate your lungs is the most common cause for chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. In the US, that's cigarette, pipe, or other types of tobacco smoke. If you hang around other smokers and breathe in a lot of secondhand smoke, that can play a role too. Your odds also go up if you smoke and have asthma. If you smoke and have chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, it tends to get worse faster. You might also develop this condition if you've been exposed to things like dust, air pollution, or certain chemicals for long periods of time. It's rare, but your genes could put you at risk for chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. If you lack a protein called alpha-1 antitrypsin. Cystic fibrosis is an inherited disorder that causes severe damage to the lungs, digestive system, and other organs in the body. Cystic fibrosis affects the cells that produce mucus, sweat and digestive juices. These secreted fluids are normally thin and slippery. But in people with cystic fibrosis, a defective gene causes the secretions to become sticky and thick. Instead of acting as lubricants, the secretions plug up tubes, ducts and passageways, especially in the lungs and pancreas. Although cystic fibrosis is progressive and requires daily care, Patients are usually able to attend school and work. They often have a better quality of life than patients had in previous decades. Improvements in screening and treatments mean that people with cystic fibrosis now may live into their mid to late 30s or 40s, and some are living into their 50s. In the US, because of newborn screening, cystic fibrosis can be diagnosed within the first month of life before symptoms develop. But people born before newborn screening became available may not be diagnosed until the signs and symptoms show up. Cystic fibrosis signs and symptoms vary, depending on the severity of the disease. Even in the same person, symptoms may worsen or improve as time passes. Some people may not experience symptoms until their teenage years or adulthood. People who are not diagnosed until adulthood usually have milder disease and are more likely to have atypical symptoms, such as recurring bouts of pancreatitis, infertility and recurring pneumonia. People with cystic fibrosis have a higher than normal level of salt in their sweat. Parents often can taste the salt when they kiss their children. Most of the other signs and symptoms of cystic fibrosis affect the respiratory system and digestive system.